take 720. Hello! And welcome to this week's Wi-Fi video blog. Just kidding. I'm actually very excited about this week's topic. Actually, I have three topics. Three topics. Three, two, one. The first topic, uh, some takeaways from George Kuros' Innovative Mindset. Um, some applications, hopefully, that we can apply to technology and innovation. I really uh, kind of actually am excited about t t um, the topic this afternoon or this evening. Um, it's all about school versus learning by George Kuros. Uh, the next topic I want to cover is some takeaways from last week and um, some neat things that people were able to provide me with some feedback. And by the way, thank you so much. I do appreciate the feedback that you've been giving me. It's been very productive and very constructive. So please keep it coming, and I look forward to seeing more of it as we move forward. And the third topic, I want to address uh, children and email, whether or not it's appropriate, whether or not it's something we can do and something we can do legally. Um, I don't have all the answers yet, but I want you to let you know that um, we are looking through that kind of thing and, and seeing what's available out there and why we've made the decision um, to only have email from 13 on up, essentially, in our district. And I'll talk about that. Um, so first, The Innovator's Mindset by George Today, I wanted to talk about the school versus learning um, articulation or illustration by George Kiros, if I can kind of put it up there for you. I actually had an opportunity to see this illustration at one of his presentations, and uh, I kind of agree with a lot of it, maybe not all of it, but I do want to illustrate that to you and give you um, a chance to have your own opinion um, about it. And please provide uh, your opinion and your thoughts about the school versus learning environment that he talks about. What he's trying to illustrate here is that there are really two worlds um, in the school building, in the school climate. One is the traditional school, and one is when learning really truly takes place. And this is, this is his belief again. And I encourage you to with a look at this with an open mind and uh, how you can apply it to technology and what the purpose of technology really should be um, and why we're here in general as well. But he says that there are two, um, basically two paradigms here between school and learning. Um, first, um, he believes that a school promotes learning by first looking at for answers. Um, a learning environment promotes starting with the questions. Well, a school is about consuming information, while learning is about creating. A school is about finding information on something prescribed for you, while learning is all about exploring your passions and interests. Schools teach compliance, while learning is about challenging perceived norms. I can see where this can be a challenging issue right there. Um, school is all about scheduled um, activities at certain times where learning can happen at any time, at any place, all the time. He believes that schools often isolate while learning is very social. Uh, he also believes that schools are often standardized while learning is very personal as well. School is all about teaching us to obtain information from certain people while learning promotes that everyone is a teacher and everyone is a learner. That I do believe and I really like to reinforce that everyone is a learner. School is about giving you information while learning is about making new connections. That's an interesting correlation. Um, schooling is about being sequential, A, B, C, D, E, while learning is random and nonlinear. Schooling promotes surface level thinking while learning is all about deep exploration. So I really look at these aspects of learning within that text and if you want to hold it up really quickly you can take a screenshot if you can if you can get that on there I'll try to get it focused up there we go those are the articulations there kind of the messy writing but I hope you can see them. Um, I can I can see direct correlations to technology and what it should be used for what it should not be used for. Um, and uh, what I really would like to encourage people not to do is using technology for technology's sake. And so many of you are so great at that, um, at, at using technology to promote learning like that in that way. So congratulations, nice work. I really appreciate all the hard work that's been done. Um, but again, I want to really look at that concept of learning versus schooling and uh, how I can apply that if I want to apply a lot of that information um, as an educational leader here in our district. So. Thank you for that um, time, and uh, if you need that book again, if you would like that book, I'd be more than happy to uh, purchase that for you and, and let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, and I'd love to step through that with some of you. Topic number two.
Um, several of you, a couple of you asked whether or not this video format would replace Wi-Fi Wednesday in a physical way uh, from the aspect of being down in the commons and meeting one to face to face. Um, I don't think there's any real replacement for meeting one to one and a meeting face to face. However, um, just the amount of reachability from the video aspect uh, has really encouraged me that to keep doing this instead of Wi-Fi Wednesday in a personal way in the comments and, and, and uh, I think that would be beneficial. Um, that doesn't to say that we all can't meet. Um, I'd be more than happy if you wanted to get together on a Wednesday afternoon and uh, talk about technology and talk about our technology needs. I'd be more than happy to do so. So just let me know. Um, I'm not going to schedule anything. This will be my scheduled event because it's a lot more flexible and it's reaching quite a few people quite a bit more people and um, this is be the way it will be for now uh, if you wanted to schedule something with me absolutely let's do it so um, again thank you for your feedback with regard to that another piece of feedback is actually our next topic people asked uh, why don't we have email for the elementary level or can we have email for the elementary or what's the history behind that and um, I was able to kind of respond to some of them, not all of them, so I did a little bit of research this week and I wanted to highlight that research. That research really brought me to this concept of the children's or this idea or rule called the Children's Online Privacy Protection Rule or um, statute that was produced in 1998. It's uh, actually a Protection Act in 1998. Um, it really talks about the certain guidelines and, and, and governance of uh, online information and electronic information that is readily available to the public regarding p children 13 years in age, uh, of age and younger. And that does include the governance of email and email addresses. Well, I, I poked around a little bit more, and this is the history behind it. When we first signed up for Google Apps for Education, we were aware that um, children underneath the age of 13 were really not allowed to have email addresses without parent permission. Um, so we kind of steered away from that initially, and now it's kind of reared its head as something that might be beneficial for teachers, especially upper elementary, maybe even lower elementary, to have. Um, but know that there are some caveats um, that we need to um, understand and talk about as we move forward. And this is an example of one way a district handled it, and I'm guessing this is um, one of the cookie cutter answers to a lot of those questions about email. Um, this actually is Douglas County School District. I don't know where they're from, but the reason I posted it is because this statement right here, if you can see where my cursor is, is repeated over and over and over and over with other Google Apps for Education schools around the nation. So I'm guessing it's the cut and paste lawyer answer that has been given out um, so that districts are covered with regard to liability. But the question was, I thought only students over 13 could have access to email. Will Gmail and Google Apps be available for elementary students? Well, the answer, like I'm kind of implying, is yes and no. Students under 13 ordinarily need parent permission, but because the districts, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, because the districts kind of act as parents in some aspects, um, the, the parent's agent, is they stay here, um, to be COPA compliant, which is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, uh, to be COPA compliant, um, we actually have to offer an opt-out um, in the process. Now, uh, we as a district in Black Duck have not yet done that. We've given a, a permission slip out, which actually articulates Google Apps for Education apps and things like that, which we there is some covering there, but it's not real clear. So, what I'm asking is if you would like something like this, would you let me know? Yeah, because I'd like to do some more information um, or, or investigate a little bit more on how we can make that happen, if that's something we can do. But know a couple things. If we were to do it, let me enlarge my screen. If we were to do something like um, email for elementary students and seventh graders, um, we need to be looking at some governance there. I know with, an, and I've done the investigating in Google Apps for Education, I know that you can actually limit um, the access of anyone outside our organization getting uh, sending emails to those students. So we really can email just within house. That would mean student to teacher, teacher to student. And that's the only access that we can have. That would, that would also mean that parents can't email their own students. So there are some um, goods and bads about having email for students, as you can see. But there's also some um, ways that we can make it happen without making it too scary um, by governing those emails. And moving on, actually, not a whole lot of moving on. 
I would like to hear more about that topic, like I said. So please go ahead and email me. Give me some feedback, not just about that issue, but about this whole um, Wi-Fi blog thing or video blog. Um, and I'm excited to hear what your takeaways were. And I would love uh, any contribution that you can give me with regard to the innovator's mindset, um, with regard to email and uh, its impact on kids and what uh, we can do to move forward with it because it does offer some pretty neat features if we do allow it for elementary students. And again, thank you for the feedback from last week and uh, I hope to continue these for a long time to come. Um, I'm, I'm getting some great feedback like I said. So thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it and I uh, look forward to your feedback for next week and have a great evening. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.